I've got another uh, challenge that you can do probably pretty relatively quickly, Beej. Yes. If you could, uh, you explained what your, uh, what your, uh, how your suit, con suit had evolved. Oh, yeah. Can you explain to us why the hell you wear it in the first place? (laughs) Like what? What is this about so, here? Why, why are you doing this? Why are you inflicting this on us and all those fine folks at home and, and s- all the people at every con you ever go to? Yeah, I think the short answer that I've heard you say is it's easy for people to find you. That's that is that is a very very. Uh, do you have a slightly longer but not too long of an answer? I do actually. Uh, so when I. I went to Anime Evolution one time uh, to perform with the 404s, and because I was also with the Anime Alberta team at that time, we got to interview for the website um, uh, some voice actors. Uh, Michael Dobson, uh, I believe Paul Dobson was there. I, I remember it was definitely Michael, it was definitely Scott McNeil. Um, and as we were talking with them, uh, S- Scott is in this outfit that he wears, where he wears a cowboy hat, straw cowboy hat. He wears a flannel shirt with ripped off uh, uh, arm, uh, sleeves because he has like beefy arms uh, and jeans and, a, and belt buckle and whatever else. He just kind of looks like like stereotypical cowboy looking dude, but he lives in Vancouver. And um, and that, and I we were asking about that because somebody had mentioned like, uh, about this outfit he wears. He's like, oh yeah, yeah. He's like, when I go to a con, I bring my hat, I bring three of these shirts, and I bring like a couple pair of jeans, and that's all I have to bring to a con. Uh, and this is a local con to Vancouver anyway. And I'm like, Okay, he's like, yeah, I have con outfits, and the reason I do this is so that when people see me at the convention, they recognize me immediately, they know, oh, that's Scott McNeil, because, because you're a voice actor, and in real life, nobody knows who you are. Oh, or what wow, you look yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, and he says, the, the, the uh, corollary to this is that I never wear this in real life, which means that I can be out on the street, I can be walking along, and no one ever recognizes me, so no one will ever walk up to me and disturb me in my private life. But they'll always, he like, when I want to be public, life. I put on the outfit. And so I'm like, I love this idea. So I started with a, uh, a stovepipe um, a stovepipe Canada hat, like this that I had left over from Canada Day. And I threw on, my, my mother got me this uh, happy, this Matsuri happy uh, in Barhead, Alberta, of all places, at a garage for like $5. There's a couple ones there, but, she, but my dad was like, oh, he's only going to want one. Why does he want two for it? I wish we'd gotten the second one. <laughs> and uh, I had that, and so I just put on like a t-shirt underneath uh, and a pair of shorts. This is like July when cons go on. And I went out on Canada Day in it, and I went out to like the conventions in it, and was like, yeah, I will just wear this at cons, because then people will see it and be like, oh, there's that jerk I always see at all the conventions walking around. He is always wearing this thing. And I'm like, I know this is a long, this is a long run. Like this is a, this is the long game I'm playing here. Uh, and then eventually got the happy made because I wanted a, a pair of like pants to wear with it too. So I had the happy made. And now I go to cons. I have, I went to Necrowombi Con, which is predates Pax, uh, to drop off some Ghost in the Shell CDs for Jerry to watch because he okay. had said he'd never seen Ghost in the Shell before. I dropped him off for him. I was in this outfit. I went to PAX two or three years later. I ran into him, and he's like, it's you. (laughs) And every year I've run into him at the event, he's like, it's you again. I'm like, yeah, it's me again. He he remembers the outfit because it's it's idiotic, uh, but it's like, that's the thing. People will remember you when you wear that kind of thing over and over. It's like, cosplayers have it great because people will be like, look at that guy. That's amazing. But if you wear an amazing outfit, but you don't wear it again the next year, they might not know that you're the same person making all these amazing outfits, whereas I cheat. Yeah. So there we go. Cool. Nice. Thank you. That's a really good uh, like idea slash mentality, though. Like I really like that, because yeah, because um, we've got a, a, a good friend, uh, Will, who does like a lot of voice acting and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, like people have, it's, it's very easy, at, I would say, he's described like being a voice actor uh, when you speak towards someone that they're like, oh wow, I totally know your voice kind of a thing, right? But yeah. like I, I could not imagine fully having fame on like voice acting because it's just like, no, like un- un- obviously until you hit like major fame and whatnot, it, I, I can only imagine it's quite difficult to uh, have people instantly like recognize you, right? Cause oh like, yeah. Because like now, like uh, if I see any like the Dobson brothers or if I see Spike Spencer or um, you know, like Yuri Lowenthal or like any of those big name kind of people. I'm just like, okay, I instantly know them. But like, most know. of the people you won't. But yeah, yeah. A special costume. So, yeah. Whereas I'll never ever know what Maurice Lamarche looks like. 
Yeah. And yeah. He's in everything, and you'll never, I'll never know what he looks like because his voice is always different. Until until like I started doing stuff with uh, SAT and whatnot, I never knew what uh, Johnny M. Bosch looks like, and he's like probably like the English dub like anime dude because like he did like Goku and all that kind of jazz, and it's just like very prolific, but. Like, I would never have known what he looks like until he started, like, actually seeing him at conventions and stuff. 